Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Game Breakdown. I am Christopher Solomon. I'm here with a brand new game. Just hit um, our mailbox last week, about the 1st of November, and it is the game Verdant by Flat Out Games. This is a Kickstarter edition. I actually looked and it looks like the campaign was fully funded uh, September of 2021, so we've been waiting a little over a year for this one to show up. And I'm definitely excited about it because it is from the same uh, designers and publisher that brought you Cascadia and Calico. And Cascadia was one of my favorites the year it was released. And um, this team is back. It's got lovely art by Beth Sobel, who also worked on Cascadia. And uh, it's got an interesting theme. It's a, it's a spatial um, game where you're going to build a tableau, which is uh, your house. And you're going to be setting up these uh, plant cards next to different rooms that give it different light uh, indicators. And you want to grab these little verdant points, these cool little leaves, and uh, grow the plants to score points. So you're going to build this three by five grid uh, in your house. You're going to take turns uh, drafting cards and items. Um, and it's got a really nice solo mode um, that is pretty similar to the Cascadia solo mode as far as scenarios and things like that go. So um, we will set up a solitaire game in this video, um, but I will talk a little bit about what uh, the difference is between it and multiplayer. And then I'll go through uh, a rule section and a couple rounds of the solo play so you can see how it works. Before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You can go to our website at boardgamebreakdown.com. We have a lot of written reviews and links to other YouTube videos there. We're also an Amazon affiliate partner. So there are links on our website where you can buy from Amazon. A lot of the games that we review won't cost you anything extra, um, but it will help kind of sponsor our site and our YouTube channel so we can keep making content. Uh, we're also on Instagram. You can find us at board.game.breakdown. So hit us up there, um, leave any comments you have. We'd love to connect. And without further ado, let's get started with Verdant. So we're going to set up the solo game, but I will give you some information as to how it differs from the multiplayer version so that you'll have that information as well. Um, but you basically see all the components here that come with the game. Uh, obviously, it also comes with a rule book, and then it also comes with a scoring pad. The score at the end of the game, which we'll talk about later. Um, but I kind of separated everything out here to make it a little easier um, to set up. So a couple things over here. You've got these green thumbs. These are going to let you do special actions and things. So you just make a pile there. You also have Verdant tokens. These small ones are worth one point. These larger ones are three points. So you want to put them as a pile at the table. Um, over on this left side here, you'll see our bag of tiles and inside there's a mixture of things so i'll show you a couple of them these green ones are uh, items that allow you to grow your plants faster do special things like that and then there are also um, these tiles here that are colored to match the rooms and those are items that go in the rooms that are going to allow you to get some extra points so you just put dump all those in the bag place them there you have your room cards here so I'll show you these there's five different colors there's this like aquamarine teal color yellow fuchsia orange and a dark blue so you shuffle up those place them there and then you also have your plant cards so they have matching colors for those five that we just talked about in the corner. 
and we'll go over more about what the actual cards mean when we get into how to play. So you're going to put those there. You also have pots up here. Um, so you have these, I think these are concrete pots, wood pots. I'm going to be honest, I don't even know which pots those are. And terracotta pots. Um, so these are worth points at the end of the game. So you see the concrete ones are worth three. These are worth two. These are worth one. And the terracotta pots are worth nothing. So when you set up a solo game, you want to take out four of these three types. And then you can have as many terracotta pots as you want. Um, I just threw a little pile out there. Um, but if you're setting up for a multiplayer game, uh, then you'll check the rule book. And depending on how many players you're playing with, um, that will determine how many pots you play with. Lastly, you'll see down here, there's three stacks. And these are different goals. So you don't have to play with these. Uh, it's called the advanced version. Um, but I mean, maybe for your first time playing, you might not use them. But I can't imagine not using them once you get used to it. Um, but you'll see that they're split up into three different categories. So there's room goals, item goals, plant goals. Obviously, those are going to um, have to do with the rooms and the items and the plants. Um, so you shuffle these up and you're going to draw one of each. So put that one out and then the rest of them can just go back in the box. Because you're only going to use one of each during the game. So you can flip these over. Just put them where everyone can view them. I will go over what they say in a second when we get into how to play uh, so that that way they make sense. All right, so now you're ready to set up the market, which is kind of the last piece of the game here. Uh, first, you're going to take one plant card and you're going to take one room card. And we're going to set those up in a second. But for the market, what you'll do is you're going to take and put out four of these, like so. You're also going to put out four, let's start down here, rooms. And it is important that the rooms get situated so that this little emblem down here is on the bottom because you'll notice that there's different icons on the side and that's important which side they're on you're going to take your bag of tiles here and you're going to take out four and put them between these And then you're going to take your four concrete pots and place them above each stack. You also, in the solo game, start with two green thumbs. So I'll just put those down here. There's a little card that you can get um, to place your items and your thumbs on. Uh, when we go to actually play, I'll pull that out. Um, so this is the market up here. You'll see how that works in a second. If you were playing with a, a multiplayer version instead of the solo version, it would be set up the exact same way, except these pots don't get stacked above. You just keep them in a pile. Um, and I'll explain how that works. Um, other than that, um, you're basically ready to play. Um, in the solo version. So with that, we will pause for a second. Uh, I'm going to rearrange the board a little bit because you're going to see that I'm building this like tableau um, off to either down here. I, I might move it over here for a second. Um, so you can see and I'll kind of rearrange this and then we'll come back and show how to play. Welcome back to the how to play section. So you'll see I rearrange things just a little bit 
I uh, basically moved all of our tokens down here. The market I slid over. And then I'm going to be building our house uh, in this section right here. That's where we're going to build the little tableau. Um, so we have our room and our plant that we started out with. Um, I want to quickly go over um, what's going on with these cards here. So let me make sure that you can see this. Um, so, all right, hopefully that's focused. Uh, on the room, you're going to see a light indicator on each side. So there's three different types. There's full sun, full shade, or partial shade. There's also an area for an item. And then a reminder here that uh, you're going to score points, one point for every um, similar plant. So the, in this case, it would be an orange plant that is on either side of the room. Uh, this square is where an item would go. And if you place an item that matches this room, there's a reminder here that you get actually two points at the end for each plant. So that's really all there is to a room. If we look at a plant here, um, so you'll have your color of the plant up here. So uh, the this is an orange. I, each one has a different name. I don't remember exactly which of the orange is. Um, at the top here, you'll see the light indicators that this plant wants. So this one wants partial shade or full sun. Over here, you will see a verdant um, point amount. That's how many of those little verdant leaf points you want to get on the um, plant to complete it. And that's where you get to put a pot on it. And at that point, at the end of the game, if you complete it, you get this many victory points. Then there's a picture and some little fun facts down there. All right, so at the beginning of the game, remember you have drawn these and we're going to pick how we want to lay them out. Um, so a room and a plant are always next to each other. So we're going to do that um, because it, remember, wants full sun and this side of the room has full sun. So at this point, because it matches a side, we're going to put one verdant token on it. So that's one out of this four that we want. What you're going to do is you're going to lay out a five by three grid to make your house. And it's always going to go flower room or plant room, plant room, plant, and then plant room, plant. So it's always going to be like one after the other checkerboard across your house. Now, these are never going to move as far as they'll always be next to each other. Um, but we don't know which level as far as the, the one, two or three rows it's in, because as we start building the house, uh, we'll do that. But uh, you'll see uh, if you've ever played like King Domino, uh, once we have three high, then we can't go any higher. And that's kind of our boundaries up and down, but we can still go left to right until we have a fifth card out there. All right, so before we start playing, let's talk about these three goals because that is going to affect uh, what we're going to do with our plants in our room. So if you remember, there's three different things. So let's talk about the room first, four corners. It gives you a description and then it tells you how many points you get at the end of the game. So this says four points for having the outermost rooms in the four corners of your home be all the same types or all different types. Um, so if you think about this being a grid, it's the four rooms that are in the corners. Um, we want them to either be all the same type, which just means all the same color. So all oranges, all fuchsia, something like that. Or we get four points if they're all different rooms. Um, so we'll just see kind of what happens with that. Um, next, let's talk about the plant goals. Again, it gives you a victory point amount. And so this says for each different verdancy requirement, you get uh, one point. Um, so that one would be um, these light tokens um, are the, the verdancy uh, requirements. Um, so for each... Um, plant that's completed, uh, you're going to get an extra point um, for any verdancy requirements that are different from one another. And then lastly, you've got item goals. So these pertain to the items that either go inside the rooms or 
something to do with pots or sometimes they have to do with the um the the tokens that you pull out like the hand trowels and things that give you special abilities so this says pot pairs so there's two points for each matching pair of pots so at the end of the game if we have two plants that we've completed with concrete pots uh, for every two concrete pots we will get two points so we'll just put those over there um, i will mention that uh, much like Cascadia, this does have different scenarios written in the rule book uh, for solo play um, where it'll give you a uh, certain three requirements. So you'll see if I pull this one back up here that it's got a letter down on the bottom. So it might tell you to play with uh, room goal A, uh, plant goal B, and item goal D and you have to make 75 points or more. So uh, it kind of gives you some fun scenarios. Uh, in this instance, we are just pulling random ones out and putting them there. All right, so it'd be time to play the game now. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look over here in the market and you are going to decide which card and tile combination to pl uh, pick up from the market. So you're either going to draw a plant and the tile right underneath, or you're going to draw the room and the tile above. Now there is a way to um, take ones that are off center from each other that aren't paired up, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but if we look around, there's a lot of orange plants. Uh, if we put them next to these room, this room out here and get an orange item, that's going to give us some good points. Um, but if we look at their verdancy requirements, both have full suns. Uh, and we still have a side down here. Um, so let's just take this first one here and we'll just grab this guy and we'll grab the item. So let's just hold them there for a second. So before you move on, the uh, other row, uh, card in the row that was not picked in that column, you're going to take a thumb and you're going to place it there. That's going to stay there until someone picks it up and they get that extra thumb. All right. So let's keep that there for a second. We'll come over here and we're going to go ahead and place this like that because we want those suns to match up. And because of that, we get a vertency token. Now, it is not a requirement that you put those together. I could have put it here. The only difference is I would not have got a vertency token. Um, so I would like to put it here. You can even put plants of a different color next to rooms of a different color. There really is no rule as far as placing them goes. The only rule is that a plant can never be next to a plant. They've got to go plant room, plant room, like I said before. Um, but it's just the way you lay it out, the better uh, your points and reaching the scenarios are. So now we also have this item. So you typically would like to place an item in the same colored room. So I don't really want to place this blue one in the orange room. So I have this card over here where you keep your thumbs. It reminds you, you can only have five thumbs max, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it there and I'm allowed to hold one item. So I can hold that there. And at some point I could play it out there when I want to. So once you've done that, you are going to refill the market and this acts as a conveyor belt over here. So what's going to happen is this pot, the one that was on the rightmost column, we're going to put away for a second or for the rest of the game and unless you um, meet some certain requirements. We'll talk about that. Any thumbs that are on here, you're going to take and you're going to move to the left and then the cards in that right hand column or tiles, if there were, are going to get discarded. So let's move that over here. And then everything's going to move to the right. So we're going to slide all this over. And you're going to move as much to the right as they go. And then this will open up this first column here and we're going to fill it back up with new cards. So there's one of each of those. We're going to grab our tile bag. We're going to pull a tile out of the bag. Place that there. And then we're going to get another pot. And you're going to go um, from the concrete pot since they were three, but we only use uh, since they're three points, I mean. But there's only four of them. We're now going to go to the wood pots, which are two points. So that goes there. So eventually you're going to run down through your concrete pots and your wood pots and 
you're going to work your way down. So the way that works is the faster you can complete a um, plant, the faster you can get the more uh, valuable pots. Uh, once they get discarded, like the concrete pot we did earlier, um, unless you can pot two plants on one turn, uh, the, it, that pot's pretty much gone. Um, so if you want your three point pots, uh, you need to get them early. Um, so at this point, we would just draw the next uh, set. Uh, we could either do a room and a tile or a plant and a tile again, and we would go from there. So here we'll do um, uh, let's see. I'll pull this because I want to show you how this works. So if I take those, remember I want to take a thumb and put it on that one because that's the one in that column left over. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to look at this. So we have a teal or whatever this is. Um, so it doesn't match, but that's okay because um, really I just really want the sun. So I'm going to put that here. So because this matches that, it's going to get a verdancy token. And then I have this item. So this is a hand trowel. So my options here are I can play this immediately um, or I could save it over here, but then that means I got to play this immediately. So I can't have two items at once. So I'm going to actually play the hand trowel. So you get a little information card um, that's going to give you the three types of tools or nurture uh, tokens down here. There's fertilizer, there's a hand trowel, there's a watering can. Um, so a hand trowel, you're allowed to add one vertency to up to three plants. Um, so I'm going to spin that because I want to show you how completing a pot works. Um, so I could put one token on three different plants. Now I only have two plants, so I'm going to say one there, one there. And this other one is a waste, but that's okay. So at this point, I have finished this pot. So I have three verdancy tokens and that needed three. So I am allowed to take these off. I just put them back in the bank over here and you're going to take the rightmost pot available and you're gonna stick that on there. So at this point, I know at the end of the game, I'm gonna get three extra points for that pot. And I'm also going to know that I'm gonna score these three points because I completed this. Now, if I put any more rooms around this, it's not going to gain any more vertency tokens. That plant is done. So back over to the market. We will refill it one more time. So remember, we are going to move any thumbs to the left. Um, one thing I will note right now is that if when you're moving the thumbs, if any card ever has three or more thumbs, you immediately discard all those thumbs. So you can never have a card that's got like seven thumbs on it. So we're gonna discard that, we're gonna discard that, we're gonna discard that. Now there is no pot in that rightmost column because we've already played it, so I don't have to discard a pot. And I'm gonna move these over to the right. All right. So I'm going to make, fill any more empty spots like so. Take our next pot, which is a wood pot. Remember, we've got four of each. Take our tiles, put one there and one there. And then we continue on. So that's basically how the game works. Um, again, we have these thumbs. So what do the thumbs do? Uh, so you can have a maximum of five um, and on your little card here where it shows the tools, it also explains the thumbs. Uh, so you can spend two thumbs to do a couple different things. Um, so three of these things you have to do before you ever draw any cards. So like right now on our turn uh, would be a good time to use them. So there's a couple things I can do. If I spent these three thumbs, uh, the first thing I can do is uh, replace any number of tokens. So that would be these four squares. I could spin the two thumbs. I could scrap all four of them. I could scrap one of them and replace them, whatever combination I want to do. 
Um, the second thing is replace any number of cards. That can be plant cards or room cards, but the rule is if there's a thumb on it, you cannot replace it. So I couldn't replace this one and I couldn't replace this one, but I might be able to replace the other ones and you just discard them and then put new ones out. The third thing is that you can draft any card plus any tile. Um, so this is very similar to how something in Cascadia works, um, where if I spent two thumbs, say I really wanted this plant card, but I wanted this um, tile, I could pull those by spending and you do this little off center thing. Um, and then everything again in this row would get discarded and then everything would slide to the right as much as possible. And then we'd refill from the other side. The last thing you can do with your thumbs is turn in two and you could place one emergency token on any plant. Um, so that's a way um, that you might be able to get you some extra emergency to fill up the, complete the plants, get the pots. Um, quickly, I'll go over the other two uh, nurture actions. Um, so we went over the hand trowel. There's also a fertilizer here. Uh, when you play that, you're allowed to put three verdancy, so that could be three small ones or one big one, since they count as three, on one plant. Um, so that's a really nice way of just uh, going boom, that plant's done. Or you can get a watering can, and what you do there is you pick one room. So like say I pick this room, and you get to add one verdancy to every plant touching that room. Um, so maybe if you get a lot of plants around one room, you use your watering can to um, water a lot of uh, plants at once. So you would go through that the rest of the game until you have filled out the five by three. Um, so you would want something like this. And then, you know, so we have one, two, three, four. So you'd have one more row, maybe this. Um, and so you would fill out uh, these sections here. I'll just draw some cards and put them out. So you can see what the whole grid might look like at the end. All right. So that's how a five by three would lay out there. Um, obviously you would be completing plants, putting the pots, and then it would be time to score. So we'll go over the scoring options real fast. Um, so you get this nice pad. Um, so I'll just set the pad here to help remind me what you can score for. Um, but the first thing is you score for all completed plants. Um, so in this scenario, this one is completed and I would score that three points, but you just basically look at each plant that has a pot on it and you add up that and put it there. For all the plants that you did not complete, you get to add up the verdancy tokens that are left over. So in this, we have two, obviously you might have more if you actually played the whole game, uh, but you divide them by two and you round down. So if you had seven uh, and you split that in half, three and a half, you would get three points. So you place that there. You then score all your pots. So you flip your pots over and add up all those. Remember that they are three, two, these are ones. And if you have terracotta pots, they are zero, uh, but you still, if you pot them, then they still trigger that. You just don't get any additional pot uh, points as I throw the terracotta pot in the floor. This is scoring for rooms and adjacent matching plants. Um, so what I do is I start in the top left and I go to the first room and it's yellow and for every yellow plant around it, I get one point. So there's one there. Now, if you have a yellow item in there, that would be two points. So I'd say, okay, that's one. Go to the fuchsia. Nothing around there matches. Go to this. Nothing around there matches. Orange. Two, three, fuchsia, nothing. Teal, nothing. One there, so four. So that would give me four points, but remember you double it if there's any items. Obviously, we didn't lay that out all that well, um, but you put that there. This is for all your different items. So I don't have a lot of items out. So here, let's just pretend that we 
threw some in here. You'll see that like there's a nice big comfy chair, a cat, a table. Um, so you want to get unique items. So on our little uh, helper card over here, this row tells you that for like one unique item, you get one point. But if you had seven unique items, you get 20 points. Um, so you would count how many unique items you have. So we have three. You look at the chart and say, okay, that's six points. There are two little bonus um, sections here. If you were to have a plant of every color, one of each color, that gets you three points. If you have every room type, that gets you another three points. And then down here is for those bonus cards. So you would take your bonus cards that we had and you would um, check to see if you won any of those. So like this, I'll show you this four corners for having the outermost rooms in the four corners of your home. But look, the way we set it up, we don't even have rooms in the outer corners. Um, so we really might want it to, um, when we actually played, instead of making this, remember these were our two starter cards, this should have been the bottom row um, or the top row because we had rooms on the corners. Um, so we wouldn't have got that one. We could check our pot pairs and we could check our verdancy requirements. But you add those in down there, you add them all up. And you see what your score is so again in the solitaire game you're probably going to be playing against one of the scenarios uh, and you can check that off in the rule book and uh, if you're playing against another person the highest point total wins if there's a tie then i believe it goes to how many thumbs you have left over so these are not extra points at the end of the game but they could be used as a tiebreaker so I think that is all there is to it. Uh, I've really been happy with this game. Um, I was a big fan of Cascadia, and this is the same team and the same publisher that brought this out. They also did Calico, which I know has gotten a lot of praise, but I have not played that. Um, but if you like these type of uh, spatial games here where it you know, you're, depends on how you lay out your tableau uh, and you want to kind of collect these sets and match and if you like um, the way the markets work in this type of thing um, where you're you know it's kind of drafting a card and then refilling it for someone else to take and i like how when you take something that the uh the opposing uh card in that column gets a thumb to kind of be uh, a bit of enticement for someone else to grab it um, that's nice. I really like the bonus objectives. Um, there is uh, maybe, I don't know, eight or ten to each type. Um, so if you think about three every game, uh, the combinations are pretty awesome and really change up how you're trying to put your house together. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Please check out the website at boardgamebreakdown.com where we have written reviews. Uh, we'll have a written review of Verdant up there, pictures, things like that. Uh, you can also check us out on Instagram, which is board.game.breakdown. We're posting things there. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, until next time, I appreciate you watching and have a great one. Mm -hmm.